Welcome to another episode of Tech Tips. My name is Steve Rodowski, and I'm a Territory Manager with Trust Joyce Warehouser. Today we're going to do something a little bit different than being out in the workshop. I want to take a look at some of the software and how Territory Managers across the U.S. and Canada look at issues with holes or notches in floor joists. So what we have here is a project from almost two years ago where a builder called us out and asked uh, about a hole that was placed. So what I do is I take a picture with my OneNote off of my iPad, and why I do that is it allows me to then take that picture and write on it. Some of the typical information that we're gathering is going to be the series of eye joists, the depth, on-center spacing, um, maybe the overall length, uh, and then the location of the hole and actually what's going on. Uh, one of the other important things is to make sure you label the number of the joist and the direction. From there, we typically bring it back to our office or send it off to tech support to allow our engineers to look at it. And what we end up doing is we take what we call an SR number. If Warehouser has done a design for it, we can type this into our base catalog and it's going to bring up the design for that uh, structure. We can go in and actually select the member, which I've labeled here, that I want to look at joist number seven, and we also want to make sure that we're going the right direction, so I've also labeled the back of the wall. I'm going to export that joist and all of its information into our Forte web, which is a single member sizing uh, process that Warehouser puts out so for free. So what we're going to do is now we import the original right joist, right. and when we take a look at the actual report, what it's showing us is the all the information on that joist. The reactions, the amount of weight, the live load, total load deflection, uh, floor performance, or what we call TJI Pro rating. From there, we take that information and we'll go in and now let's plug a hole into here. We remember from our uh, drawing that we took that we have a 14 inch hole four inches high and we have the location which is going to be the outside member to the center of the hole and the vertical offset is going to be from the top of the member to the center of the hole. When I click on the report here we can scroll down and we know that it's failed. We see that we have an extra large rectangular hole, all the information that we've imported and almost 30 percent over in sheer capability of this joist because of how close we are to bearing. If you remember from my first video, shear increases as we approach the bearing point. So right now we're at 647 pounds of shear at that three foot, five inch location. So how could we have addressed this different? So when I come back to the office, after we've collected that information, what we end up doing is we know that the original joist is failing. So we have to take a look and see where would that hole have worked. One of the options that we could have done if somebody called us or called the tech support line is taken that information and plugged it in and we can see that that same exact hole um, done at a 10 foot 10 offset actually drops almost 437 pounds of shear. So we're only using 42% of the shear capability or capacity of that joist over the allowed 500. So this would have passed just fine. So people are going to ask, well, where do you get that information from? Well, unfortunately, even if you went into a pocket framers guide or if you went into the TJ4000 specifiers guide, um, we have the tables here. So in a single member or a single span sizing, we go down, we pick the 16 inch joist, the 210 series. And as we move across into the rectangular holes, we can see that a 13 inch is the maximum that we go. So no matter what in this application, if they wanted that large of a hole, this would have to be looked at with soft. So what if so this is on a weekend or a territory manager or people aren't getting back to you fast enough and you want to know, is it possible to get all of this through an eye joist? What I actually did is separated the holes. And by doing this, when we scroll down and take a look at the information, we now have one circular hole for that waistline that was in there. So we're using 52% shear capacity. And then we put a 10 inch rectangular hole um, where you see uh, that it's now passed at 42% using uh, of shear capacity. So what does that mean? Well, if you were to go back into that pocket framers guide or go back into our TJ4000, and let's take a look. So at a 16 inch 210, for a four inch round hole, you only need to be from outside of bearing or the edge of the joist to the beginning edge of the hole needs to be one foot. And now as you go across and we're looking to see, can we do a 10 inch hole? Well, we're not showing a 10 inch, but we are showing an 11. So at 11, we can go to this eight foot to the edge of the hole. So right here, by using the calculations that are given to you, this could have been solved right from the get go. 
uh, and when we go back to our drawing um, none of this would have to be removed unfortunately in this scenario because everything failed all of this mechanical uh, all of the plumbing electrical would have to be taken out uh, all new floor joists put in and then all of this material reinstalled I know a lot of people are going to question, well, can't we do a header joist or a plumbing box that they sometimes call it? Unfortunately, because of the amount of joists that are affected here, what we end up with is over 100 inches of um, perpendicular to this joist that would have to be headered off. Um, typically, a headering of a joist is going to be for a single joist. So the best thing to do is call your local territory manager, ask questions right away. We're here to help. We're here to talk about it. We can solve a lot of these problems. Uh, we can come out to your job sites. We can work with your uh, installers and we can even provide larger hole charts. Uh, we can do this for our TJIs as well as our solid section material, whether it's our Microlam LVL, our Timber Strand LSL, or our Paralam PSL. And that, again, thank you very much for attending today's uh, tech tip, and we will see you at our next episode. Have a great day.